It feels like I've heard the phrase culture change a lot recently. And the context I usually hear it in is, how do I get culture change? It's very rare that I hear culture change in the context of, and this is how we got culture change. I don't hear that very often. Uh, and, and I think the, the phrase itself almost implies a really complex topic, but it doesn't have to be complex. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time today talking to you about how to get there. Uh, but before I do that, I want to tell you just a little bit about myself. I teach behavioral science for a living, and I love what I do. I've had the opportunity to work with many different people uh, in many different places who faced many different challenges. And one of the things I love about my job is the fact that regardless of who's standing across from me, my objective is always crystal clear. And that's simply to help people achieve results. Every result that you could possibly imagine has occurred because of the collection of behaviors that came before it. So here's another way of thinking about it. There's no achievement in the history of mankind that would have occurred if not for the behavior of people. So purposefully achieving results require at a minimum an understanding of behavior. Right? Achieving results require, at a minimum, an understanding that what we say and do has an impact on the people around us. What we say and do today has an impact on what our people say and do tomorrow. So helping people achieve results at the individual level, that's, that's really fun and that's actually pretty simple. Helping people achieve results at the organizational level, that is a little bit more complex. Because at the organizational level, what we're talking about is influencing a large group of people. What we're talking about is culture change. So when I say culture change, what I'm referring to is influencing a group of people in such a way that they're collectively working toward the same result. Their behaviors match one another. So for some of you, I know we've got a representation of a number of organizations here today. For some of you, maybe that result is a safer place to work. For some of you, maybe that result is uh, high production or high efficiency. For some of you, maybe that result is a high utilization target. Whatever it is, we're talking about people working collectively working towards that result. The question is, how do we get a large group of people collectively working toward the same result? That's the culture change question. Maybe even a better question is, how do we get a large group of people genuinely wanting to and happy to work toward the same result? That is the question. I'd like to start off by telling you um, what not to do. So my wife bought me a grill, a gas grill, earlier this year, and she had the confidence that I could assemble the grill on my own. How many, how many people here have ever assembled the gas grill? Raise your hands. Wow, wow, quite a bit. I was going to say it was, it's really hard to do, but from <laughs> the number of hands, it's really hard to do. It was a, I think it was a four bur it's a four burner, so maybe that makes it a little, I don't know, I, I, a little more complex. So anyways, I, I guess when she, was, uh, when she was at the checkout counter, she was offered the option to pay a little bit of extra money for the assembly, and she said no. So she comes home with the grill, I'm really excited, and I immediately I go to assemble the grill, and about 60 minutes into the project, Lisa walks outside, and she, she spots me staring at the picture on the box. And she says to me something like, staring at the picture on the box is not going to get you to the final product any, any sooner. She was a little bit puzzled because I said, that's the problem with organizations. So let me tell you what I was talking about. In my experience, organizations trying to achieve long-term results, they get stuck on the big picture. They get stuck on the final result. And, and it doesn't matter what your final product is. If you don't have it right now, your leaders aren't saying and doing what's necessary to achieve it in the future. You need to focus on today. So moving forward, let's say the circles represent people on the slides, and the squares represent their working environment. All right, so what you want as an organization is what we call the gold standard. You want everybody in the organization saying and doing the things necessary to produce the result that you want. What I like to do is present you how to get there in three phases. If the gold standard is everybody saying and doing the right things all the time, then that's not what you're going to get right away, right? So to get to gold standard, you need self-enlightenment, you need some pockets of gold, and then finally gold standard. So let's start with the phase one, self-enlightenment, leadership. No surprise, this phase starts with and goes through leadership. If you as a leader can't say and do what's necessary to achieve the results that you're asking your people to achieve, then don't expect them to. Once you have enough people saying and doing the right things, right, you have people in pockets in the organization saying and doing the right things. You can't have everybody doing it, but you have people saying and doing the right things. And, and so people kind of tend to gravitate towards these pockets. And eventually the idea is that you work towards the gold standard. This takes time. It takes a lot of time. You can't do it overnight, and you can't focus on the final product. You can't focus on the end result. You have to identify the day-to-day -day behaviors necessary for your leaders to achieve that result.